These notes are over probability 1.9 section of the gray book. Your central question is how can I solve probability problems? So probability is a concept that you first learned about in junior high. It is usually represented as a fraction. Um, it can be converted to a decimal or to a percent, but the fraction is written like this. The top part of the fraction is represents the number of favorable outcomes. The favorable outcomes are things that we want to happen. Um, favorable means we want them. The denominator represents the number of possible outcomes. These are all of the things that could possibly happen. So probability um, can be between the numbers 0 and 1. If the probability of something is 0, it absolutely will not happen. If the probability of something is 1, it absolutely is sure to happen. So most probability falls between 0 and 1. Um, if you convert it to a percent, it will be between 0 and 100. Let's take a look at this example. We are given angle C. Um, one side of C has points C, B, and A. The other side has C and D. We're told um, if two of the four points are chosen at random, what is the probability that both lie on ray C, A? This should be on, excuse me. So, a lot of students don't take the time to list all of the possibilities and they end up getting these wrong, even really smart students. So please make sure that you're following these steps to ensure that you'll get them correct. A lot of students will say, oh, two out of four, that's one half, right? Or they'll look and they'll say, oh, there's three points on that and two points on that, so it's three out of four, right? <laughs> I'm just um, exaggerating a little bit here. But the first thing we want to do is list all of the number of possible outcomes. We're going to list the bottom part of our fraction first. All of the possible things that can happen are um, in, the top, in the first part of the sentence. If two of the four points are chosen at random. So we list all of the possibilities. We could choose points A and B out of those four. We could choose points A and C. We could choose points A and D. I've exhausted all my points A, so now we go to B. We could choose B and C or B and D. We've already listed A and B, which counts for A and B or B and A. So we've used all our A's, we've used all our B's, what's left is C and D. So what we have, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six possible outcomes if I choose any two out of the four. Now we want to take a look at the number of favorable outcomes. That is what we're trying to find. It says, what is the probability that both lie on ray CA? Well, the points on ray CA are points A, B, and C. Ray CA starts at C, continues towards A, and keeps going. So if I look at these six possibilities that we listed in blue, the ones that contain two points that are on that ray are points A and B, points A and C, not points A and D, points B and C, not points B and D, and not points C and D. So that's one, two, three out of six, which will reduce to one half. That is why the answer is one half. It's not two out of four equals one half. You're not using this. Okay, it just happens that those both equal the same thing. So I need y'all to understand where this one half came from. All right, here's another example. We're given this number line that goes from point A at 3 to point C at 11 and point B at 15. Um, we are told that a point Q is randomly chosen from segment AB. Segment AB starts here goes all the way to B. So this whole line is segment AB. A point is randomly chosen from that segment. So we could choose the point from this, from this section, this section, this section, this section, this section, all the way down to B. If we can't, if we count those, we have a possibility 
of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 units with which to choose point Q from. So of all the possible outcomes, there are 12 that we could choose from. Now we're going to take a look at our favorable outcomes. The favorable outcomes are what we want to happen. What's the probability that it, meaning point Q, is within 5 units of C? Here C, within 5 units, means 5 units on either side of C, to the left and to the right. If we go to the left, um, we could have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units within to choose, or within C, that we hope that point Q lands on. To the right of C, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. However, this last space is not within the confines of segment AB. It's outside, so that one doesn't count. So of the places between A and C, A and, sorry, A and B, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 units within 5 units of C on segment AB. So 9 is how many things we want to happen. 12 is the possibility of things that could happen. And keep in mind that 9 is out of 12. So that's why that 10th spot over here we had to exclude because that's not out of these 12. Reducing 9 twelfths, we get 3 fourths. So the probability of choosing a point between A and B that is within 5 units of C is 3 out of 4. So those are your notes. My, um, my suggestion with the probability ones, if you want to get it right, always start with the denominator, figure out how many things could happen, and then of those, of these, don't add anything to it, Figure out your numerator of those 12 things, or whatever it is that could happen, how many of those do we want to happen? And that's it. See you in class.